As some of you may know, this week is National Suicide Prevention Week. It's so important that we continue to raise awareness of these issues while reducing stigma and shame that others may feel about getting help. This issue is especially close to our hearts here at NoCD because research actually shows that people who have OCD are 10 times more likely to die by suicide than the general population. In fact, the World Health Organization previously ranked OCD as one of the top 10 most disabling disorders. It's common for people with OCD to experience significant depression and stress as well. While OCD can be debilitating, we want you to know that there's hope out there for anyone who may be suffering. OCD is extremely treatable and we're here for you with resources to help so that you don't have to feel this way forever. In addition to our evidence-based treatment, we also offer in-app support and resources, as well as support groups with other individuals throughout the OCD community so that you can know you're not alone. While raising awareness of and reducing stigma about suicide is crucial, we also know that there are individuals out there who have OCD who may be triggered by the research that we just shared. We also recognize that there is a subset of individuals within the OCD community who struggle with a type of OCD or types of OCD called suicidal OCD or self-harm OCD. It's important to note that suicidal OCD and self-harm OCD are different from actual wanted acts or intentions of suicide or self-harm. Suicide and self-harm OCD are types of OCD where individuals may experience intrusive, unwanted, disturbing obsessions about harming themselves or ending their life. Many of these individuals are terrified that they may impulsively act in this way and harm themselves, even though it actually terrifies them and is the last thing that they would ever want to do. In fact, we call these obsessions ego dystonic, meaning that these thoughts and urges and sensations actually go against their core values and cause extreme anxiety. Individuals with suicidal or self-harm OCD may struggle with compulsions like avoidance. For instance, removing all of the knives or sharp objects from the house. They may avoid driving or even seek reassurance about their mental health. It's important to recognize that ego dystonic suicidal or self-harm OCD are inherently different from actual wanted instances of suicide or self-harm. The difference is in whether these thoughts are wanted or unwanted and whether these thoughts scare you or frighten you. OCD can be extremely nuanced and these topics can be really triggering. We get that, but we believe strongly in continuing to advocate for those who may be suffering in silence so they know that they're not alone and that help is available. If you resonate with any of the information that we shared and feel that therapy could help you, please reach out to us at www.treatmyocd.com for a free 15 minute call with a member of our care team. We're also gonna be including some crisis resources along with this video for anybody who needs it. Remember, you are not alone. And even though OCD can be extremely debilitating when left untreated, it does not have to be that way forever. We're here for you and we can help.